on World News Tonight. Nightmare on Nightmare. The death toll from the quake is rising at an unprecedented speed, with survivors now fearing a secondary disaster. Hence subpoenaed. Former Vice President has been subpoenaed by the Special Counsel overseeing the investigation into Donald Trump. Starlink revoked. A sudden move by SpaceX might cause a turning point in the war in Ukraine as soldiers are left without any internet. And Festival Gala. China's Lantern Festival Gala spreads joy with dazzling performances. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight this Friday night. Now, leading still is the developing situation in Turkey and Syria after the powerful earthquake. The death toll has now surpassed 22,000 and up to 10 times as many possible could still be buried underneath the rubble. Residents are still holding on to hope for more miracle rescues. The most recent fear is that survivors trying to cope with a secondary crisis due to a lack of foreign humanitarian aid. It's the fifth day since the earthquake hit and the number of dead has increased exponentially. In Turkey alone, at least 17,000 people are confirmed to have died. In Syria, more than 3,000, according to the officials in Syrian Civil Rescue Team White Helmets. The combined total is more than the number of people who died in the Tohoku earthquake and following tsunami that hit northeastern Japan in 2011. Citing a Turkish earthquake expert, The Economist has reported that the final death toll could be as high as 180,000, as more victims could be found in the following weeks. The so-called golden hour for survival passed after 72 hours, but the rescue teams are still desperately searching for any survivors. Some miraculously are pulled out of the rubble alive, but the destroyed roads and cold weather are hindering rescue efforts. In Turkey, more than 6,000 buildings have collapsed and 750,000 people are taking refuge in temporary shelters. But even those who survived the earthquake could face a secondary disaster as cold, hunger and despair are leading to worsening and horrific conditions, according to the WHO on Thursday. The organization's incident response manager Robert Holden said the basics of life such as water, fuel and communication supplies have been disrupted, which could cause more harm to people than the initial disaster. Meanwhile, the delayed government response has angered many in Turkey. They said even as they could hear cries for help from those that are trapped, there were not enough rescuers, expertise or support. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan visited the affected area on Wednesday and promised no one would be left homeless. Turkish official on Friday is saying the disaster posed very serious difficulties to the long-ruling president in the upcoming election in May. Now, the first UN aid convoy has made its way through the only open humanitarian corridor to reach Syria's rebel-held northwest, bringing much-needed help to one of the hardest-hit areas by Monday's quakes. Six trucks packed with precious resources. It's the aid Syrians in the northwest of the country have been desperately waiting for since the earthquake flattened the rebel-held region. Today, on the fourth day following the destructive earthquake that hit the region, the first UN aid convoy arrived through the Bab al Hawa crossing. This convoy consists of six trucks carrying medical and relief supplies and will be handed to a United Nations partner organization within the area. Isolated, the region is controlled by Syrian rebel forces and mainly relies on the Bab al Hawa corridor from Turkey for the delivery of humanitarian aid. The other crossing points have been shut. Transporting aid from Damascus is diplomatically complex and too risky. The UN is urging for assurances that political motivations don't get in the way of humanitarian aid. So far, Syria's hardest-hit region has been relying exclusively on the White Helmets, a group of volunteers that formed during the civil war that operates in the rebel-controlled areas. Though they don't lack experience when it comes to rescue operations, they lack the means. Authorities say more aid convoys are on their way, and according to the UN, Turkey is in the process of opening other corridors, though these are yet to be approved. 
Now, the Morgan Stanley Capital International, or the MSCI, has said it will cut the weighings of Adani Enterprises and three other Adani firms in its indexes. The latest blow to the Indian conglomerate thrust into crisis by a short seller's report. The index provider reassessed the size of company's free floats, having determined there was sufficient uncertainty surrounding some investors in Adani companies. It embarked on the review after feedback from market participants. New York-based short seller Hindenburg Research in a January 24th report accused the Adani Group of shock manipulation and improper use of offshore tax havens that obscure the extent of stock ownership of Adani family members in the group firms. The conglomerate, which had denied any wrongdoings, had since been pummeled by a stock route that has been wiped some $110 billion off the value of its main seven listed firms. In addition to the group's flagship firm Adani Enterprises, MSCI said it plans to cut the weightings for Adani Total Gas, a venture with France's Total Energies and Adani Transmission, a power transmission company. It will also reduce the weighting of ACC, a major Indian cement company acquired from Switzerland's Holcim last year and which is not one of Adani's group's main seven listed firms. There have been protests in Parliament, with lawmakers demanding an investigation. Adani Enterprises, a coal mining firm and the group's incubator for new projects, was also forced to shelf a $2.5 billion stock offering. Adani Transmission and Adani Total Gas slid 5% on Friday, while ACC was down 1%. The United States has warned that it and its allies will explore taking action against any and all entities connected to China's military that supported the flight of a Chinese spy balloon into U.S. airspace last week. The United States may take action against entities connected to China's military that supported the flight of a Chinese spy balloon into U.S. airspace last week. That's according to a senior State Department official on Thursday. The official added that Washington is confident that the manufacturer of the Chinese balloon has a direct relationship with the People's Liberation Army. The White House echoed the notion that Washington would take action, but has not specified what measures are under consideration. The FBI is leading efforts to analyze recovered remains of the balloon and said it had obtained only limited physical evidence. The Bureau has said it does not yet have enough information to assess its capabilities. But the State Department source said high-resolution imagery of the balloon revealed it was capable of conducting signals intelligence collection operations. The spectacle of the Chinese balloon drifting over the United States last week caused political outrage in Washington. Democratic and Republican lawmakers sharply criticized the military and the Biden administration for failing to shoot down the balloon when it first entered U.S. airspace and instead waiting for a week to do so. China's foreign ministry has said it was a weather balloon that had blown off course and accused the United States of overreacting. Former U.S. Vice President Mike Pence and former National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien have been subpoenaed by the special counsel leading probes into classified documents found at former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence and efforts to overturn the 2020 election result. Pence was issued a subpoena by special counsel Jack Smith, though the nature of the request was not immediately known. The action follows months of negotiations involving federal prosecutors and Pence's lawyers. Robert O'Brien has been asserting executive privilege in declining to provide some of the information that prosecutors are seeking from him. Pence's office did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Smith's office also declined to comment. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland named Smith as special counsel in November to oversee investigations of Trump shortly after Trump said that he would seek the Republican nomination for president again in 2024. The first probe involves Trump's handling of highly sensitive classified documents he retained at his Florida resort after leaving the White House in January 2021. The second investigation is looking at efforts to overrun the 2020 presidential election's results, including a plot to submit phony slates of electors to block Congress from certifying Democrat Joe Biden's victory. In late January, Pence said that he was not aware, though he takes full responsibility after classified documents were found at his Indiana home. The documents were discovered after a review of his personal records was conducted in the wake of classified material being found at President Joe Biden's home in Delaware. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side.
Welcome back. Now, in a speech to the European Parliament, President Vladimir Zelensky said Ukrainian soldiers are battling the most anti-European force in the world as he reiterated requests for military support in the fight against Russia, linking Ukraine's fate to that of Europe as a whole. As Vladimir Zelensky entered the hall, the European Parliament stood to its feet, a standing ovation for the Ukrainian president. And with the applause came a promise from the president of the parliament. Because Ukraine is Europe and your nature, nation's future is in the European Union. But becoming an EU member is not an easy process and typically takes years. Zelensky has been pushing for an accelerated timetable, saying his country is fighting the biggest anti-European force of the modern world. Long-term peace in Europe will only happen when Ukraine is victorious and when it becomes an EU member. This is the unity we managed to build. It was a message of unity echoed by European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, who announced new EU sanctions against Moscow, including export bans worth more than 10 billion euros and a targeting of Russian propaganda. We have one vision and family members help each other. Zelensky's stop in Brussels follows visits to France and Britain earlier in the week. In Paris, he appealed for more heavy weapons, telling French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz that time was running short. And in Britain, he made a dramatic appeal for fighter jets. Thanking all of you in advance for powerful English planes. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak stopped short of promising the warplanes, but said nothing was off the table. Western allies have already supplied billions of euros in military aid to Ukraine, including tanks. Zelensky's European visit comes amid warnings from Ukrainian officials that Russia is planning a major offensive in the northeast and in the south of the country, which is likely to take place this month, as the conflict approaches its first anniversary on February 24. Meanwhile, a senior Ukrainian presidential aide has reacted with anger after Elon Musk's SpaceX said it had taken steps to prevent its Starlink satellite communications service from controlling drones, which are critical to Kyiv's forces in fighting off the Russian invasion. SpaceX has taken steps to stop Ukraine's military using its Starlink satellite internet service to control drones. Company CEO Gwyn Shotwell says the system was never meant to be weaponized. She says Ukraine has used it in ways that were not intended and not part of any agreement. Shotwell said the system was purely intended for humanitarian purposes, not offensive operations. SpaceX has now taken action to stop Starlink's use with drones, but wouldn't give details. It wouldn't say whether some service outages in Ukraine were connected to the measures. The system has provided Ukraine's military with broadband connections for its operations. Starlink has shipped thousands of terminals to the country, allowing users to communicate via its network of satellites. Shotwell said its use for communications was fine. Russia has attempted to jam Starlink signals in the region, but the company says it has been able to counter that with software changes. An investigation into the downing of Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 in 2014 has linked Russian President Vladimir Putin to the approval of the use of the missile system that shot down the plane. This leaked 2017 phone call is supposedly Vladimir Putin speaking with a top pro-Russian politician in Ukraine's breakaway Luhansk province. It's part of the evidence investigators have been looking at in their probe of the downing of Malaysian airline flight 17 in 2014. On Wednesday, investigators said there were strong indications Putin approved the use of a Russian missile system in Ukraine, which shot down the plane. Intercepted conversations revealed that the decision about whether to provide military support lay with Putin. There is also specific information showing that the request to supply the separatists with heavier anti-aircraft systems was submitted to Putin and that the request was granted. 
but they say more evidence of Putin and other Russian officials' involvement is needed for a criminal conviction. We do have strong indications about his decision-making, uh, but we do not reach the high bar. Uh, and beside that, because at this moment uh, Putin is still head of state, he is head of state, he has an immunity. So only um, after there, he is not a head of state, we can look into what's next. As a result, they are closing their investigation for now. We've reached our limits. We've done everything that we can within our limits, and the next answers, they lay in Russia. And as long as there's no cooperation in Russia, those answers will remain there. Russia has denied any involvement with the downing of the civilian airliner, which killed 298 passengers and crew. The plane was shot down by a Russian missile system as it flew over eastern Ukraine from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur. Ukrainian forces were fighting Russian-backed separatists in eastern Ukraine's Donetsk province at the time. Investigators said the case could be reopened if new evidence emerges. Pete Plu represents the victims' families. He lost his brother, his brother's wife, and nephew in the crash. We have some good news for you. There's now a new crawling robot that can do risky manual tasks at construction sites. This is going to have a positive impact on the safety of construction workers in the future. A four-legged robot is crawling up a steel wall. It goes around any obstacles in its path and also crosses over low structures with ease. It can also walk across the ceiling hanging upside down. Developers of this robot say it can move as fast as 70 centimeters per second on a vertical wall and 50 centimeters per second when hanging on the wall. The secret to its wall crawling ability is a special magnet and rubber material attached to the bottom of its four feet. The magnetic feature must be turned on and off flexibly as its legs are taken off the ground. So we developed a magnet that can perform this function instantly. The 8-kilogram robot can withstand a force five times heavier than its weight. It can also easily climb the walls carrying a load as heavy as 3 kilograms. The developers say the robots will further improve safety for workers at construction sites, replacing manual tasks in welding, inspecting structures, cleaning high poles and skyscrapers, and more. Welcome back, and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. The Shenzhou 15 astronauts on board the orbiting Chinese Tiangong space station have completed their first spacewalk. Fei Junlong and Zhang Lu, together with Deng Qingming, who worked inside the space station to support his crewmates, collaborated to pull off all set tasks. Fei and Zhang have since safely returned to the Weixian lab module. Cristiano Ronaldo scored four goals for Al Nasser in the Saudi Pro League to reach the career milestone of 500 club goals. Yahoo plans to lay off more than 20% of its total workforce as part of a major restructuring of its ad tech division. The cuts will impact nearly 50% of Yahoo's ad tech employees by the end of this year. Unilever said it would continue to raise prices for its detergent, soaps and packaged food to offset rising input costs and ease up those hikes in the second half of 2023. Residents in New Zealand prepared for Cyclone Gabrielle two weeks after the country's largest city was hammered by historic levels of rain. Gabrielle is likely to impact New Zealand's North Island from Sunday through to Tuesday. Day. And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again on Monday as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you miss any of the stories tonight, you can always watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other than English. Now we leave you tonight with the 2023 Lantern Festival Gala, hosted and aired by China, staging a mix of exciting performances, immersing audiences in a cheerful and festive atmosphere. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.